And I thought to myself, who could kill such an innocent child? Cell, I'm begging you, don't! This is part one of an ongoing series and was created by Jairus Smith. Support him on Twitter and catch up fully using the links below. A few months have passed since our hero's stunning win in the Tournament of Power. Goku and friends are enjoying a time of peace. And Frieza departed without a trace. Lord Beerus returned to his planet in an attempt to get a little shut-eye. However... <sighs> something has awoken him from his slumber. He explains how it's hard to sleep after such a glorious win, though he definitely had his doubts at times. Whis is no different. He too believed there were moments they were surely done for, but Goku and the others came through in the end, and in stunning fashion, he might add. The way Frieza and Goku combined their strength was remarkable. And then there's Vegeta and Goku. The two of them have come a long way since the Destroyer first encountered him. Even since the tournament, they've reached new heights. Beerus thinks back on both of them. Specifically, Vegeta's evolved blue state, and Goku's mastered ultra instinct. The angel comments that with challenges like the Tournament of Power, there's no telling how far those Saiyans can go. Beerus admits he's right. It seems that one of them will pose a legitimate challenge to him soon. That's when Whis mentions Gohan. He remarks that, believe it or not, Goku's son, who was part of their win in the tournament, once surpassed even his father when he was just a boy. But is he serious? That's hard to believe, especially given he was eliminated relatively early. Using a staff, the attendant shows him firsthand. This is ridiculous! Where was all this during the tournament? It's likely what the staff shows is either the defeat of Perfect Cell or Ultimate Gohan taking on Majin Buu. It's explained that Gohan doesn't share his father's taste for a challenge in terms of fighting. He was even reluctant to join the tournament to begin with until he learned what was at stake. However, Beerus just feels this is a waste of power. Taking a seat, the angel tells how Gohan's only focus and concerns lie with his wife, child, and being what the Earthlings call a scholar. Though if he had this much power as a child, one can only imagine what hidden power he currently has locked away. Whis actually agrees with the statement. However, his inner strength seems to come from the loss of life and not the thrill of a challenge, which supports his earlier theory about him in regards to his motivation to fight and loss of life. This fact prompts Beerus to ask Whis to show him his previous battles again. Stopping on his battle against Cell, he shouts that one, believing this to be the fight which stands out most, commanding Whis to bring this one to him. But does he mean Cell himself? On Earth, we spot our heroes taking the day to enjoy the beach, reminiscing and echoing the words of the deities. Gohan admits there are moments in the tournament he really didn't think they were gonna win. And Goku knows. In fact, he's sure everyone had doubts at times, especially knowing what was at stake. But they all pulled through in the end and it was a team effort. Krillin adds that they all played their part. Dare he say even Frieza helped with the whole thing. With a bit of a shudder, Gohan is aware of all this, but he feels he himself could have done more. He neglected his training so much that they had to team up with Frieza of all people. In doing so himself, he sacrificed himself to take out Dispo. Goku comforts his son and presses that he has to stop beating himself up. He did the best he could and he's proud of him. A statement Krillin agrees with. But Gohan... is apprehensive to side with him. When Bulma interrupts to ask if everyone's enjoying the sun. Jumping up. Our hero is the first to chime in that as much as he likes to annoy everyone with his constant training, it's nice to get them all together like this and have a good time every once in a while. Who couldn't agree more with such a statement? Chi Chi adds to this. She'd love for her husband to spend more time at home with his family. But of course, he'll just find some excuse to go train. Time after time. And speaking of training, he's curious where Vegeta is anyway. Someone who is training. He's back at the house. He'd rather do what he does every day instead of being here. Which... tracks? That sure sounds like Vegeta. Cueing Goku to follow suit. He bids everyone goodbye and tells him he's gonna go check on the dear old prince. Though everyone else simply rolls with this. His wife barks that it's just like him to abruptly leave during a family outing. What if he's going? Bulma has a message she'd like him to give Vegeta when he sees him. Tell him that she said he's a big jerk for not showing up. Not arguing. 
The Saiyan locks onto his key and teleports away. At Capsule Corp. The prince is seen working away in the gravity room. As his best buddy suddenly appears behind him. Aggravated, he hisses to know what he wants. Can he see he's busy? And about that, Bulma wanted him to say that he's a jerk for not being with him at the beach today. Vegeta does nothing more than scoff at this. But moving on, Goku thought it would be a good idea to have a little sparring session. However, his rival feels otherwise. Chiding, he's doing just fine on his own. Goku argues that he knows Vegeta wants to test that new strength of his. Why not now? The simple question causes the prince to relent. If only for getting Kakarot out of here sooner. Back with Beerus, familiar silhouette faces towards the destroyer, who explains that he knows that he has some history with these Saiyans. Their battle in particular interested him, which is why he had a servant Whis summon him here. Whis himself has to admit that this plan is rather cruel, even by the destroyer's standards. Beerus merely utters that he's a god of destruction, not an angel. Destroyers can be cruel at times. Besides, he wants to see just how much power that boy is hiding. If he has potential anything like his father's, he needs to witness it. Unfortunately for him, this is the only way Beerus sees it coming to light. As we said before, his trigger seems to be the loss of life. So, show this man his target. The angel complies. Beerus then beckons, what was her name again? With minor hesitation, it's Fidel. A name that now rings a bell for the deity, the wife of the Saiyan Gohan. That is his target. The boy has grown quite strong since their last encounter, so Beerus has given his visitor here a portion of his own power, just enough to overpower Gohan's current strength. But does he think he can handle it? Officially revealing Cell, he chortles with pleasure. With that, Beerus instructs Whis to take him to Earth, who does so without complaint. Tapping down. Whis laments that he's done what Lord Beerus has asked of him and brought Cell to Earth. As you may have noticed, he himself isn't too fond of this plan, so he will not be assisting in finding Videl's location. Given his sadistic nature, the Biodroid merely replies that he understands, likely happy to hunt her down from scratch. With this, the angel departs, leaving the rest to him. Cell grows an evil smirk as he focuses on his goal. He tells Gohan he's coming. Meanwhile, back with Goku and Vegeta, it appears the Saiyans have just finished with their sparring match. Stretching his arms, the latter told him he wouldn't regret a quick fight, who has to admit that Kakarot being here wasn't a complete waste. Which brings Goku to a big question. He inquires if it's cool for him to just crash here tonight. He'd really like to get a little sleep. But why? Is his wife mad at him or something? She's always mad at him for something, but that's not it. Either way, Vegeta doesn't care and the answer is no. But why not? Because he said no and it's his house. Prompting Goku to actually agree with Bulma from before. Vegeta can be a big jerk sometimes. Who simply leans into the accusation and hopes the door hits him on the way out. As our hero closes the door to the gravity chamber, he runs into Bulma. She asks if Vegeta's in there. Who comedically snorts. Yeah, in there being a jerk. She smiles and figures Goku would know better than anyone by now. He tells her they just got finished sparring and they're both exhausted, so he's going to head home. But it was great seeing everyone at the beach today. With that, the two finish their pleasantries and head their respective ways. As he arrives in his front lawn, he yawns that he's ready to grab a shower and get some R&R. Bad news for him, Chi Chi's already waiting for him at the front door and screams his name. Causing him to sigh, here we go. Which doesn't make his situation any better. In the city, the Sun family arrives home with Krillin. Fidel thanks him for tagging along, but it's late, so she's going to put Pan down for the night. Her husband asks her to give their daughter a kiss goodnight from him. Turning to Krillin, he questions what was it that made him tag along anyway? And the truth is, it has to do with that mystic or ultimate form of his. It's quite unique. He saw it during the tournament and it was the first time he ever got to witness it up close and personal. Krillin was just wondering if maybe he could teach it to him. And that's all? Sure, that's no biggie. Though we shouldn't expect too much. 
Piccolo only helped him enough to be able to unlock it to get through the tournament. But Krillin believes it'll be plenty of help. Focusing. He taps into the form for a second. Just long enough for someone to sense his location. With a hue of pride, Gohan asks Krillin what he thinks. Who believes his friend has come a long way? How about the two of them race back to his place? It'll be a great opportunity to test out the speed of his. They can get back in no time. An idea Gohan's totally down for. But of course, Krillin smirks that he gets a 10 second head start. Blasting off. The saying gives him a fair countdown. As he leaves, he's completely unaware that his life is about to change forever. His wife, Adele, couldn't have asked for a better day. Though as she lies her head down for a nap, she can't help but wonder where Gohan went. Ten minutes go by before she hears a knock on the door. She figures that's probably him. Recognizing the monster all too well from his worldwide antics during the Cell games, she cries out, this can't be! He's supposed to be dead! With the others, Krillin laughs that even with a head start, Gohan still beat him here. But he guesses he shouldn't be surprised. And given Krillin was in a car, we shouldn't be either. Gohan assures this was fun and all, but it's late and he should be getting back home now. Turning around, he thinks to himself that he doesn't normally leave Pan and Videl alone at this hour. He should hurry. With Goku fresh out of the shower, he's ready to finally settle down for the night himself. But he can't shake this sudden, terrible feeling. Hopefully, it's just the exhaustion. At Capsule Corp, Vegeta also gets the feeling something isn't right. Though seeing his wife already fast asleep, he figures it's probably nothing. As Gohan makes his way into his home, he wonders why the front door is open. Upon calling out for Videl, there's no answer. He begins to grow concerned and calls out to her again. Dashing around, that's when he notices Pan is also missing. What's going on? When he hears the cries of his daughter. To his horror, Cell has taken them both. He snarls out to his executioner that he's grown. Gohan argues this is impossible. He killed him. And yet, here he is. As the monster's grip tightens around Fidel's neck, the Saiyan screams that he doesn't know how he's come back, but he's going to let his family go right now. With that condescending tone, the Biodroid mocks that he's in no position to be making any demands. He takes this moment to go into a bit of a monologue. After he was obliterated by the Saiyan child, he had a lot of time to think when he was in hell on just how he would seek his revenge if ever given the chance. If he were ever able to escape his eternal prison, and out of nowhere, that very opportunity presented itself to him, one he couldn't simply pass up. Of course, he feels no obligation to go into any further detail, but he's sure he will find out more soon enough. His goal was to only kill Gohan until he learned he had a family, and it hit him. Why not kill them all? As Fidel's consciousness begins to fade, with her final breath, she's able to whimper out that she loves her husband. As Cell ruthlessly kills her and tosses her body to Gohan's feet, he taunts him that he knows what he must be feeling right now. Anger, hate, frustration, but above all, helpless. Helpless that he could do nothing to save his wife. Now here he is, holding his child, a beautiful baby girl. He thought to himself, who could kill such an innocent child? With tears in his eyes, Gohan begs him not to do it. In the Highlands, Piccolo too wonders why he's sensing Cell's energy. There's no doubt that Gohan killed him during their battle years ago. It's impossible he'd be resurrected. Maybe these times of peace are beginning to play tricks on his mind. When his most recent energy blast settles it, Cell or something like him is definitely back. This key isn't lost on Tien and Shoutzu either, bringing back horrible memories of the chaos the android caused. The former tells his friend to stay put. He's going to check this out. And in town, Yamcha gets his grub on at a local restaurant. Scarfing away, the food here is amazing. He's definitely got to. 
his evening is also interrupted. The server takes notice of his demeanor and asks if he's okay, who does his best to play off the situation. With great timing, she hands him the check, to which he pulls out the first bill capable of covering it, telling her to keep the change. He too flies away to investigate what's going on, leaving her rather confused in the process. Finally, back around to Krillin, he tucks in his own daughter for the night. Going to the fridge, he pours himself a cup of tea, causing his wife to question when he's coming to bed, who promises soon, right after. Just like the others, Cell's key rips through the turtle student like razors. As 18 asks what's wrong, he already knows it's Cell. He doesn't know how, but it's definitely his energy. Which is impossible, Gohan destroyed him ages ago. Krillin knows this, but there's no mistaking his key. If it is him, the others have already sensed him by now too. He tells her to stay here and look after Marin. He wants to check this out, hoping he's wrong. 18 hopes the same, only pressing he be careful. With Whis peering in, he inquires if Beerus is satisfied with his plan so far. The destroyer smacks his head in regret that he only told Cell to kill the wife, not the child as well. However, he should have known who they were dealing with. It's no surprise that the Cell creature has a personal vendetta against the Saiyans. Especially Gohan in particular, since he was the one who destroyed him. Goku, nor Gohan, will take this lightly should they find out about it. Beerus rolls his eyes at the Saiyans still don't even know that it was he who ordered Frieza to destroy planet Vegeta. They'll never find out about that and they'll never find out about this either. He only hopes he's right. Well, something's confusing Beerus. He was told that Gohan gets his strength from the loss of life. Yet Cell just killed his wife and child and he does nothing while Cell laughs at him. The angel assures that it's merely his mind processing what just happened. But while he's busy processing, Cell is surely going to attack. He better do something before he... As something catches both of their attention. With Cell back for revenge and instilled with the power of a god of destruction, how will go on handle the loss of his family? Does Cell even stand a chance? And as Beerus cross the line of no return, for our heroes. This and many more questions to be answered on the next Dragon Ball Rage.